What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 10 of the Joe and Joey Show. My name's Joey. And I'm Joe. If you're new to our show, thank you for giving us a listen. And if you want to watch the video version of our show, you can watch us on our YouTube channel at the Joe and Joey Show. And where else can they find us? Find us on Instagram and iTunes. All right. A little bit of housekeeping before we start the show. So our show consists of three topics. Each episode we'll discuss and debate. Usually the first two topics are sports related and the last one is a current event topic. Today, I think we're talking about three sports topics, right, Joe? Yes, sir. All righty. So let's get right into the show. We're just going to talk some NFL draft today. We're going to talk about who's our favorite players, who do we think is the most overrated and underrated players in the draft. So, Joe, give me your most guaranteed player in the NFL draft 2023 to succeed. I'm going to go my favorite player. I'm a receiver guy. I'm going to go with Zay Flowers. That's a good pick. Zay Flowers is from our backyard, South Florida, Broward County. Um, I think it's impressive what he's done. He's he's working with Perform, Nick Hicks. He put on like 10, 15 pounds for the, the draft, for the combine. Yeah, I saw his draft comp with Steve Smith, right? Yeah, and he put on all that weight, so now he's more powerful and strong, and he's the best route runner in this class. That's what everybody's saying. So, I mean, when you're compared to one of the legends like mm-hmm. Steve Smith in the NFL, I think that's like... A no-brainer. Yeah, I saw Steve Smith also. He usually does like his favorite receivers in the draft. And, you know, he was right on Cooper Cup coming out and nobody had Cooper Cup. And Steve Smith called that one. He said, Cooper Cup's the best wide receiver in this draft. And I believe this year he picked Zay Flowers, right? He did. He compared him to himself, too. He's Sheesh. the one that made the, the comp to himself. And yeah. He, and Steve Smith said Flowers is better than him coming out. South Florida kid, too, right? Yes, sir. I think he went to uh, either Chaminade or St. Thomas, one of those two. That's crazy. I'm going to give you my most likely to succeed player who I think is a guaranteed smash pick, and that's B. John Robinson, right? Yep. And my marker for guys going to the NFL is what did you do against Alabama, right? <laughs> so B. John Robinson had 130 total yards and one touchdown versus Alabama. That's an NFL team. If he's doing that against Alabama, I mean, he's going to succeed. And if you look at his draft comps, B. John Robinson, Pro Football Focus, has compared him to LaDainian Tomlinson and Edron James. Bleacher Report has Brees Hall, and NFL.com has Josh Jacobs. Those are all Pro Bowl Hall of Fame running backs. Maybe B. John, or maybe uh, Brees Hall will get there one day. We don't know. But LaDainian and Edron James, that's crazy, right? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I saw a video on, on Twitter the other day of LaShawn McCoy talking about B. John Robinson, mm-hmm. and he's basically said B. John Robinson, like if God designed a running back, he would look like B. John Robinson. I mean, not the fastest guy in the draft, but can glide down the field. He's but got, he has good speed, though. He ran a four four six. Yeah, he's got home run speed. If he yes. breaks away, you're not catching him. He's got the power. Yeah. He pass blocks. He can cut on a dime. He's just, I think he's one of the best prospects we've ever seen coming out of college. Yeah, you know why I really like Bijan Robinson? His stop and start ability is next level. It's elite. And that's what Edron James and LaDainian Tomlinson had. He's able to stop on a dime and accelerate right away and break away from people. Explosive. Explosive, man. He's got elite acceleration, cut on a dime, can power. catch the football power. Strength. He's, he's like the perfect size for a running back, too, at six foot, and he's like 220 pounds. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, I mean, he's obviously the best non-quarterback in the draft. Obviously, the quarterbacks are going to go first, but they're saying now he might go in like the top five. Dude, I think he's the best player in this draft. Even Pro Football Focus has B. John Robinson ranked as the best player in this draft. He's a 98 out of 100 overall grade. He's definitely the best prospect in this draft. Weaknesses, though, they say he needs to work on pass blocking a little bit. You know, I feel like all the running backs coming out of college need to work on that. Yeah. Once they face those uh, NFL defensive ends and linebackers, you can't really simulate that in college. No. So I think Bijan Robinson is the best player in this draft. I would take him with the first pick. I think it's a guaranteed smash, no matter what. Yeah, I agree. So give me your most underrated player in the uh, draft this year. Underrated. That's tough. I'm going to go with our boy. Jordan Battle out of Alabama. We know his older brother Jalen Battle. We you know we played against him in high school over at U School. Mm-hmm. This kid's a stud, man. And it, the reason why he's not getting the hype he should is because the other safety branch coming out of Alabama this year, he's just as good. But I I think Battle, he's his a lot of people compare him to Sean Taylor. 
Um, That's a good comparison to have. Yeah. Both from South Florida, big 6'1", 6'2", powerful, mean, mm -hmm. will, will hit stick you, run you over. I mean, there's like videos of him in college, like pick six and then running the quarterback over in the end zone. So I think, I think he's most underrated. What about you? I'm going to say my most underrated player is Hendon Hooker this year. And I go back to the Alabama games. That's my marker. If you're going to be good in the NFL, Hendon Hooker's, his performance versus Alabama was he went 21 of 30 for 385 and five touchdowns with a 94 QBR. That's almost a perfect game against Alabama. They beat Alabama. The pressure of playing that team is like an NFL team. So do you like Hendon Hooker? Yeah, I'm, I'm big on Hendon Hooker. Obviously, he had that injury, so he's going to fall in the draft. But um, he's got two wide receivers also in the top 50, uh, according to PFF. Yeah. So obviously that helps. But, I mean, he's he was consistent all last year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm big on Hendon Hooker. I, I like him more than some of the other guys that, you know, Kuiper and McShay got up there. Yeah, no, I also like Hendon Hooker because he's a great pocket passer, right? He's, he's not really known for his legs, but watching that Alabama game and him in the pocket, he just looks comfortable there. And you can tell when quarterbacks are, they've been playing the position for a long time and he's been playing since a young age and he's just super patient in the pocket. He doesn't get rattled. He doesn't get happy feet like some of these other quarterbacks. You know, he's, uh, I don't know, man. I just, I like Hendon Hooker's game. So, all right, give me uh, your, let's see what we got next on here. Give me your most overrated player in this draft. Overrated, I'm going to go with Dalton Kincaid. He's a tight end out of Utah. Um, not really a big household name, right? PFF, and both of us know we're big on PFF. That's like mm -hmm. we, we always go by them. They have him in the, the top 10 overall draft pick. He's like ahead of B. John Robinson. Like He had one good year, which was this past year, but he, he's very injury prone. So I, I think... He's a little bit overrated, in my opinion, and tight ends never go like in the top first round anyway. So mm -hmm. that's my overrated pick. Yeah, I'm going to say mine this year is Will Levis. I'm not a huge fan of Will Levis. I know you're a Kentucky fan because your cousin played football there. I don't know how you feel about Will Levis. I just think Will Levis is being a little bit overrated. First good competition this year, Tennessee, for example, went 16 to 27, 98 yards, three picks with a 13 QBR. That's a super low floor for somebody that's going in the top five. And also he regressed from 2022 to, or 21 to 22, he regressed. So in 2021, he had 23 touchdowns. Uh, and then in 2022, he had 19 touchdowns and he had 200 or 2000 less yards, I should say. So through 10 picks, I'm not really a huge fan of Will Levis. I don't know why he's really getting all this hype. So what do you think about that? Yeah, Will Levis, and nobody's more familiar with Kentucky than me because, like Joey said, you know, I, my cousin played there and now he coaches there. Um, Levis, he, he just had a down year because they switched the offensive coordinator and they lost, you know, a lot of linemen to the NFL. Mm -hmm. So they didn't do a good job protecting him this year. Um, I'm with you, though. Like, you know, I, I've watched the kid play every game. <laughs> he was at Kentucky, and, I, you know, he's – don't get me wrong, he's a great player, but I don't think he's a lottery pick in the NFL, so to speak. Yeah, neither do I. So just to recap, our favorite uh, players, our most guaranteed player, most overrated, underrated players in this draft. So my most likely player to succeed in this draft is Bijan Robinson. I think the most underrated player in this draft is Hendon Hooker and most overrated Will Levis. Or recap your picks right there. Mine um, most likely to succeed is Zay Flowers. Uh, most underrated is Jordan Battle, and most overrated is Dalton Kincaid. All righty, so let's move on to topic number two. So according to Bleacher Report, the Jets and Packers re-engage in trade talks for Aaron Rodgers in a hope that a deal will be done within the next week, right? So NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reported Sunday that the Green Bay Packers and New York Jets recently re-engaged in trade discussions about the star quarterback after a dormant couple of weeks. The two sides hope to agree on a deal this week, although it is not imminent, per Rappaport. With the 2023 draft quickly approaching, it makes sense why the two sides are feeling urgency, right? 
So Albert Breer of Sports Illustrated wrote Wednesday that chances are very high that Rodgers will become a Jet between now and early Friday night. And the main reason for the delay is because the Jets are hesitant to commit to a first rounder um, to give uh, for Aaron Rodgers. So Joe, do you see this deal getting done with the Jets and Packers? And do you see the Jets giving up a first round pick for Aaron Rodgers? How do you see this playing out? Yeah, I see it getting done. I see the Jets giving in and ultimately giving up that first round pick, maybe two, to get Aaron Rodgers. They have to, right? Like, what are they going to do? Yeah, I mean, even if they do draft somebody in the first round, it's not going to equate to Aaron Rodgers anytime soon, even if it is a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So I think they need to pull the trigger and and go all in on a Super Bowl because they they really are a quarterback away. And Aaron Rodgers, he's got at least two more elite years left in him, I would say, don't you think? I think so. I mean, he's only two years removed from the MVP. I mean, everybody can have like a down year and bounce back, right? So I don't see why the Jets wouldn't give up a first rounder for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Zach Wilson and Joe Flacco, Mike White, those guys aren't even like a quarter of Aaron Rodgers. And if you have like a top five ranked defense, you have young skill position guys that are elite right now. Why wouldn't you do it? It's I think it's a lot of it has to do with them just being flat out greedy and, you know, stubborn. But I think if they if they want to get this done, they'll they'll mm-hmm. pull the trigger. But you can't be greedy and stubborn. You have to give Green Bay what they're asking for. Or somebody like the 49ers might come in and say, here's three first round picks for Aaron Rodgers. And then you lost them and mm-hmm. then you got nobody. I, I actually also think, too, that Aaron Rodgers going on the Pat McAfee show and saying that he's going to be a Jet, I think the Packers are playing hardball now, right? Because they know he wants to be the be a Jet, and the Jets want him. So they're like, all right, you're going to be a Jet? Give me a first-round pick for you then. Let's see how serious you guys are, right? Yeah, well, I don't know why they're being stubborn. You know, Aaron Rodgers, he's, he's one of the greatest ever, so... And he's got, you know, he's got something left in the tank, you know, like, why not just pull the trigger now? That way, you know what you're you're going into with on draft day so you can build your team around Aaron Rodgers and fill some holes. But if you let this linger on past the NFL draft, what if you don't pull him now? Now there's there's options that weren't there anymore. So exactly. And you know what? Also, I think Aaron Rodgers, they need to make this move now also because It'll give him a two-year window, right, to win a championship. And plus, Zach Wilson is so flustered right now with the year he had. He's the second pick in the draft, right? He, You never know. He has the talent. So maybe if you let him sit behind Aaron Rodgers for two years and learn from Aaron Rodgers, maybe that will propel him to be a great quarterback after Aaron Rodgers leaves in two to three years, right? Yeah, and he's still on a rookie deal. So you're getting Zach Wilson at a discount. Mm -hmm. He can learn from one of the greatest ever. You know, Aaron Rodgers, it kind of reminds me of what Brett Favre did at the end of his career. He just wants basically everybody to be up his ass and figure out what's going to happen. So Mm -hmm. I kind of get that same vibe right now with Rodgers, but he's a character. We all know he's, he's a little, you know, not the traditional media guy. He hates the media. He's not going to, you know, reveal anything. So it's just wait and see with Darren Rodgers. Yeah, you never know with Darren Rodgers. But if the Jets are in the business of winning, they need, to, they need to make this move, like, as soon as possible because there's reports of the 49ers now trying to get involved. Maybe they're like, oh, the Jets aren't interested. Let's see if we can sneak in there and get Aaron Rodgers. And those teams are both very similar. They're both, like, quarterbacks away, so... If I'm the 49ers or the Jets, I'm giving up a first, second, and third round pick, man. That catapults your odds like tremendously to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say if it's not done by the NFL draft, they're not gonna do it. They're so not do you think them. the 49ers will get him then? Yeah, they could swipe in and get him. Those are the only two teams I see Aaron Rodgers going to. It's either the Jets or the 49ers. I don't see anything else. You never know. I mean, because the I you know, the 49ers, right, they're looking to move Trey Lance. So what does that tell you? That they don't believe in him. Brock Purdy is not going to play this year. Mm-hmm. With that UCL, that Tommy John injury, he's not going to play. That's like a year-long recovery. He'll be back for end-of-the-season playoffs. 
who are they going to go into the season with if not Trey Lance? Sam Darnold? So why wouldn't they be in the race to get Aaron Rodgers as well? I honestly think that's a better fit for Aaron Rodgers as the 49ers. You know, the head coach for the past two years, even when Rodgers won the MVP in Green Bay, was LaFleur. And he comes from that Shanahan tree. So the offense is similar. So he'll be familiar with that. Rodgers obviously went to school in, in Northern California. So I'm mm-hmm. sure he wants to go back there, be close to home. I, and the 49ers have been to the Super Bowl and almost won the Super Bowl. The Jets, to me, it feels like, yeah, they're a quarterback away, but their offense, like, I don't really know who their coordinator is. Mm-hmm. Um, their line is not as good as the 49ers. There's not Trent Williams, you know, protecting your blind side. So I think the Jets, I mean, I think Rodgers, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I think Rodgers is sitting back right now and saying, do I really want to go to the Jets or do I want to go to the 49ers who are more proven? Yeah, we'll see what happens. I either see the Jets or the Niners. I don't see anybody else. Yeah. All right, so let's move on. Our third topic, we're going to have a little bit of fun today. So we are going to do a start, bench, and cut segment. So let's start with NFL quarterbacks. So who are you going to start, bench, and cut between Herbert, Burrow, and Trevor Lawrence? I think the obvious answer starting is Joe Burrow, Mm -hmm. right? National champion at LSU, went to the Super Bowl, and maybe even got robbed out of winning the Super Bowl. Uh, Because it was in L.A. versus the Rams. Mm -hmm. Um, Bench, I'm going to bench right now. And you might call me crazy for this. I'm going to bench Trevor Lawrence. Okay. I'm going to take Trevor Lawrence on the squad. He he was impressive last year. Um, Him coming out of college, we said he's like the guy. He's like a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have on your team. Yep. So I'm going to go Lawrence, and I'm going to cut Herbert. I know it always seems like I'm bashing Herbert, and I'm not a Herbert fan. Cause I'm, cause I'm a big Tua guy, cause he's on the Dolphins. But you're just salty that the Dolphins didn't get Herbert. Yeah, I mean, I think Herbert. I'm not gonna say he's a social media quarterback like Acho did. That was a little crazy, but I think Trevor Lawrence is more talented and he's done more with less. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. All right, so give me your start bench cut guys again, quarterback. I'm gonna start Burrow, mm-hmm. bench Lawrence, and cut Herbert. All righty. And then I got some quarterbacks for you. All right, shoot. Start, bench, cut. First one is Lamar Jackson, Mm -hmm. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. Ah, This one's even tougher than the one I asked you. Dual threat quarterbacks. I think I'm going to start. I think I'm going to start Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bench Lamar Jackson, and I'm going to cut Jalen Hurts. And... I'm going to start Lamar Jackson because he's more healthy and more available than the other two guys. Like little, little Josh bit, Allen, you mean? Josh Allen, yeah. A little bit more proven. So I'm going to start Josh Allen. I'm going to bench Lamar Jackson. He's the MVP of the NFL. And I think if you put Lamar Jackson on the Eagles, he would have done the same thing last year as Jalen Hurts. And I'm going to bench Jalen Hurts, reason being, I know he's the highest paid player in the NFL now. I'm going to bench him because cut. he's only... Cut, cut yeah. Yep. I'm going to cut him because he's only had one... Great year. The other two years were kind of wishy-washy. So so just to recap my start, bench, and cut, I'm going to start Josh Allen. I'm going to bench Lamar Jackson. I'm going to cut Jalen Hurts. Okay, that's fair. So I got running backs for you now. Start, bench, and cut. Who are you going to start, bench, and cut between Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, and Josh Jacobs? Man, that is really difficult. I'm going to start Saquon Barkley. I think he's done the most with nothing um he's had some great years with a poor offensive line um was the third one dalvin cook dalvin cook and josh jacobs i'm gonna i'm a little biased i'm gonna go with dalvin cook Mm -hmm. on the bench he's a miami guy miami central florida state won a national championship um i think he's he's a little more proven than jacobs i know jacobs led the league in rushing last year um that was one year so I'm, I'm going to go with Cook, and then I'm going to cut Josh Jacobs, the best running back in the NFL. So recap those uh, start, bench, and cut running backs. I'm going to start Saquon Barkley because he's the most talented. I'm going to bench Dalvin Cook, and I'm going to cut Josh Jacobs. Okay. And then the running backs for you, I got to read it real quick. All righty. I'm excited for this. Yeah. It's I the, like this segment. It's tough. It's challenging but because these are all great players. Yep. So the running backs I have for you is Nick Chubb. Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry. Oof. 
this is tough. I'm going to start Derrick Henry. I'm going to bench Nick Chubb, and I'm going to cut Jonathan Taylor. I'm going to start Derrick Henry because he's a beast, you know, 2,000-yard rushing season, almost broke the rushing record. I'm going to bench Nick Chubb because he's, to me, Nick Chubb is like the best pure runner, him and Derrick Henry in the NFL. So I'm going to bench him. I'm going to cut Jonathan Taylor because he didn't really have a good year last year. That's fair. So to recap my running backs, I'm going to start Derrick Henry. I'm going to bench Nick Chubb, and I'm going to cut Jonathan Taylor. So let's move on to our final start, bench, cut, wide receiver segment. Who are you going to start, bench, and cut between A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, and Mike Evans? Gosh, that's brutal. Big body, possession receivers. They're all pretty similar. Yeah, they are. So I'm going to go with... A.J. Brown, start. Start, okay. I, I probably would have done the same thing, A.J. Brown. Yeah, okay. he's just a monster. I mean, D.K. Metcalf is too. I'm going to bench D.K. Metcalf because he's younger than Mike Evans. Oh, you're going to cut Mike Evans, huh? Yeah, and I'm going to cut Mike Evans just because he's already won a Super Bowl. I think he's happy with his career. He's mm-hmm. got a lot of miles on those legs, so I'm going to cut Mike Evans. I think, and I might be wrong on this, so don't blast me for this, but I think he might be the only wide receiver in NFL history to start every year of his career and have a thousand yards in every single year. Mike Evans. Yeah. Yeah. That's so insane. that that's tough. But I see you're kind of going with like more of the upside. Right. I see. And okay. youth, younger. So recap your wide receiver start bench and cut. I'm gonna start AJ Brown. Went to the Super Bowl mm-hmm. last year. I'm okay. gonna bench DK Metcalf. Had a monster year. And I'm gonna cut Mike Evans because he's getting older. He's the oldest receiver in that you group. You might get roasted for that. <laughs> yeah, especially being here in Florida. Yep. okay. And, and I got a really tough one for you, oh, uh, wide receivers. Yeah, <laughs> and this is assuming they're all healthy. All healthy. Yep. And I can pick. Yep. Okay. So first one, Justin Jefferson, mm-hmm. Cooper Cup, and Tyreek Hill. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That's super hard. Ah. Uh, I'm going to start Justin Jefferson think he's the most consistent most available and most productive out of the three man this one's hard i think i'm gonna bench tyree kill and cut cooper cup and i know cooper cup had the greatest wide receiver season ever ever in the history of football and won the super Bowl. and won the super bowl probably should have won super bowl mvp yeah, also definitely but that's a season right Tyree kills the fastest player. He's probably the fastest player in NFL history. And he's very consistent as well. He proved he can do it with Patrick Mahomes and Tua, any quarterback. I don't know if Cooper Cup can do it with any quarterback besides Matt Stafford. So I'm going to start Justin Jefferson. I'm going to bench Tyree Kill, and I'm going to cut Cooper Cup. That pains me to say that. Okay. All right, so we're going to end the show with a rapid-fire one-word uh, to describe these people, okay? So it's a rapid fire with one word to describe someone, okay? Okay. So I'm going to start with you, Joe, okay? Go so ahead. Donald Trump. Reckless. Kodak Black. Uh, Finesser. Drake. Singer. Singer. And Andrew Tate. Mm, Andrew Tate. I'm going to say funny. Funny. <laughs> okay. All righty. All right, and I got some funny ones for you. One word to describe these people. Okay, let me see. First one is The Rock. Steroids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Messy. Goat. Biden. Incompetent. The Liver King. Swindler. Disingenuous. Scammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All those words together. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the show. That's three topics. Thank you for watching us, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys.